Right. There's no feedback. It, it's just. I don't know. I just know that that's the option that people will use. They'll use either or. They'll either ignore it and accept that there's going to be blinks, or they're going to remove them. Okay. But if it removes them and takes that segment out, it doesn't put a zero data at the end there. Yeah, all it does is splice it like it didn't happen. Right. And then on the manual threshold updating, you can also use, for example, to adjust theta T or. or well, you adjust the percentage and then hit the Y key and then the, and we'll see that from the training screen much easier than okay. trying to explain it right now. Does this stuff uh, affect the event wizard? Uh? No. Right now we haven't touched the event wizard. We're not thinking about the event wizard. The only thing that the event wizard cares about this for is if we're using the simple terms like channel one theta amplitude is greater than channel one theta threshold, then the threshold is based on whatever we have it set in here for. So they do interact that way. On a definition level. On a definition level. Mm -hmm. It'll pull the threshold from the standard software. It'll pull the bandwidth of the component from the standard software. OK. So could you do what you said about the all sense sounds? Which part? I, I just OK. Auto set stops, basically. 20% time over threshold. Since it's a stop, we want it to be below threshold. So if it's 20% time over threshold, with this particular example, we would be meeting criteria on a stop 80% of the time. So if it's a stop, the lower the number, the easier it is. The higher the number, harder it is. Okay? Everybody okay?